so my name is Teal and I am a mother. My baby will be one on July 2nd and I'm also a business owner. I'm a creative marketing consultant, a digital marketing strategist, whatever fancy words you want to put in front of that to say that I spend a lot of time on social media um, for my clients, for myself, um, doing all types of stuff. So this is this is this is a good combo. This is a good combo. Um, I spend a lot of time on social. I spend a lot of time on my computer, emailing, um, setting up campaigns, helping people with their marketing um, problems, and just finding marketing solutions for them. So that has to do with a lot of online. I'm also a daughter, I'm a friend, I'm a girlfriend, and um, that's who I am. So I'm, I'm a mom, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, I'm a girlfriend. And what I do for work is spend a lot of time on the internet. So we have a girl, college student, wants to become a business owner, okay, I feel you. Single mom, raising four kids. Oh, sis, I feel you, I feel you. Here's the thing. Social media is a form of social communication and social media is also a business tool. But the thing is, social media does not, it, it often does not reflect what's happening in our real lives, right? Sometimes it's, it can be an escape. Sometimes it can be inspiration and sometimes it can be extremely triggering and you know just to get transparent about my journey into becoming a mother I had to I had to take some time off of social media I became a mother um, during this pandemic and I was away from my family so I'm located in Atlanta right now my family's in Ohio um, and I'm here with my boyfriend and I'm becoming a mom for the first time. I'm in a different state in the middle of a pandemic. And I think that you guys can all attest that COVID and the pandemic has affected everyone in so many ways, so many ways that we couldn't have been prepared for. And for a lot of people I know for my clients specifically, um, social media became the main way for them to run our business. Um, especially, you know, my, some of my clients who had in-person events and activations, they had to take everything virtual and take everything digital. So even before the year 2020, social media was a constant energy exchange for people. But I do feel that the pandemic spun it in a completely different way. Guys, if you have any, you know, stories related to how the pandemic affected you personally when it comes to your social media use, please let me know. I know there was a time period where it seemed like every day someone was having an Instagram live conversation and a virtual conference and um, a seminar and a workshop, and it was every single day right as soon as we got into the pandemic and instagram there was so much information everywhere i mean people started learning how to invest in the stock market for the first time people um started to do these crazy virtual dating experiences virtual speed dating experiences all the singles who were single in the pandemic together um there were so many different information streams coming at us all at the same time and the reality is you know, I could summarize this whole topic using social media to empower mental health by just saying, don't be on it, right? Like delete the app, archive the app, delete the app, delete your profile. But at the end of the day, um, people use social media for so many things and feeling a sense of belonging and feeling connected to our communities is a, literally like on our hierarchy of needs list. Um, it's important to us to feel connected to our communities and we have to feel connected to our communities. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into different, you know, tools of the platform that we can use to protect ourselves. But the reality is, um, social media is a part of our lifestyle at this point for a lot of us. I mean, I know if you're tuned into this session, I know you feel the same way. Okay. 
Let's see what is popping in the chat. You guys are popping. I'm TK. I work as a program coordinator for a youth center. A lot of social media and peer support event printing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's becoming overwhelming and not a space I feel drawn to share authentically anymore. Feeling a conflict between that feeling and the pressure I feel to use it as a tool to grow my business. Complete same boat. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from. So one thing I will say, I'm going to continue to share a little bit more about my story with you guys. Um, my daughter just woke up from a nap, but it's okay because her dad's here. <laughs> Mother of one, business owner, child care, um, very new to this right now. I like to call in advance in home child care for working parents involved in my community. Save the babies, stay out of the future. I love this. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Everyone, please uh, feel free to jump in the chat and share your story with me. <laughs> so I was pregnant during this pandemic and my main source of income was managing everyone's um, Instagram profiles. So I plug in y'all so I don't, so I don't lose uh, battery power on you. My main source of income was managing my client's social media accounts. Um, a lot of people in the marketing space are looking for social media managers. And at the time, I felt so much pressure to continue to generate income, um, not only from myself, you know, my household, but you, to raise a child. Like I knew that this was going to be an expense. So I felt a lot of pressure to secure these contracts and to make sure that my business is still moving. My marketing business is still moving. Um, and I'm pregnant. I've got all these notifications on my phone from all these apps that I'm managing. And at one point, you know, closer to me actually giving birth and having my child, I realized I needed to set my business up for a maternity, you know, leave, a maternity experience. And setting up your own maternity leave as an entrepreneur is interesting. I've actually decided that I'm writing a book about it because I don't feel like that's the conversation that anybody prepared me for. Um, especially when I'm working in the marketing space and in the social media space, it's always on. Um, Instagram doesn't really take vacation. You know, Twitter doesn't really take vacation. Um, so I had to set myself up in a way that would keep my business running, keep my clients happy and give me peace of mind in a break while I adjust to becoming a mother. So I hired people on my team to kind of take this over for me. But then I got home with my baby and I realized I don't want to do it anymore. And I closed out my social media management contracts because I had to prioritize my peace. So that's a big part of what I wanna talk about today is prioritizing your peace. And what comes with prioritizing your peace is setting boundaries. So you have to know for you, part of learning ourselves, and I know we have um, some recent college students, we got some business owners, um, recent college grads, we got current college students, business owners, mothers. This is an ongoing, ever-changing um, fact that we have to realize with growing up and just continuing to live and function. We just have to continue to learn ourselves. All life gives us is more and more opportunities to learn ourselves. And what we do with that is we set boundaries and we prioritize things. And when it comes to social media and our mental health, you have to set boundaries and you have to prioritize. Now, we're talking about with this group of, of people, we're talking about using social media for your business. And we're also talking about using social media for your personal life. For me, right now in this moment, Instagram is too much for my mental. So what I'm doing, when I wanna post a picture of my daughter and I just want to um, share something with the world and I wanna feel connected to my community, I get back on Facebook where my family is, where my college friends are, where my childhood friends are. And I post about my daughter and I catch up with my friends, I see their children and then I, I keep it moving. 
the social aspect of my life that I want to pour into right now has to do with my in-person experiences. I'm prioritizing in my life in this moment, my connections in Atlanta with other like-minded mothers and like-minded entrepreneurs in person, because that's how I want to feel connected to my community right now. I don't want to post on Instagram. I just, I personally don't want to. Business-wise, I am logged into the accounts that I'm associated with for my clientele, but I've removed that service from my business model and I'm no longer offering Instagram management for my clients. And I had to take a moment with myself. I had to sit with myself and I had to journal and I had to think and I had to realize, yes, that may be a very on-demand service that's out there in the market, but it doesn't feel good for my mind. The less time I spend on Instagram, the happier I am. The more time I spend on Instagram, the less happier I am, the less energy I have. And it might not be the case for you, or it might be the case for you, but at the end of the day, you have to take a in tune moment, a body scan, an energy scan, and be real with yourself and think about what is depleting your energy right now. And as I think it was Ashley said earlier, this is it's not a it's not a conversation. Um, that our community is having. It's not a conversation that our community is having. Right now, the feed, um, my timeline, the way my personal Instagram timeline is flowing, and we're gonna get into this as well as curating our timelines, but the way that it's flowing is um, people are really, you know, celebrating things, um, which is, it's beautiful. There's nothing, what we're, what we're talking about is the way that I feel personally affected by social media profiles, the way that you feel personally affected by social media profiles. How is it affecting your mental health? How is it affecting your energy? What feelings does social media bring up for you? And for me right now, Instagram brings up a lot of feelings that makes me unsatisfied with the things that I have in my life and unsatisfied with, um, me and I, and I don't like that. And at the end of the day, um, none of us should be in situations or environments for too long um, that make us feel unsatisfied about our lives and who we are. So that's what I personally am with Instagram. And what I've decided to do is take a hiatus from the app. So I know we've all heard of, I'm on a social media break, um, you know, I deactivated my account for a little bit. Um, and those are two features and um, solutions that I would suggest you consider if you're in a place where a certain social media app is affecting you energetically. Um, in an extreme, I would consider deleting the app, deactivating the app. And we're talking personal, you know, here, because when it comes to business, that's another conversation and we're going to have that. But um, deleting the app, deactivating the app, a couple more things definitely would say, you know, of course, muting certain profiles that um, you maybe don't want to unfollow, but you're maybe not interested in subscribing to their content right now muting profiles, blocking profiles, unfollowing profiles. And the thing is, um, I, f I feel like sometimes people think that someone is going to take it so personally if I unfollow them. Um, and it's just a day and an age where you have to choose your peace over everything. And this is just so serious. And it looks different for all of us, but choosing our peace over other people's comfort is major, very important. My name is Akela, I'm 18, an older sister, and I really wanna find my passion while also making money because I hate the feeling of struggling, create something of my own. Stuck in college, but I'm a scholars program. So many things I'm interested in, I'm not sure what I want or what I like, girl. I feel you, I feel you. Um, 
the biggest thing that I'm going to say for you, Akela, that you have so many things you're interested in, but you're not sure what you want to like, is to just try everything. The more things you try with hands-on experience, um, the more you get closer to what you really, really, really want to do. And another thing on this on this social media and these timelines and this content, um, it, I know you guys have seen that meme where it's like, the different ages that some of the most iconic people, you know, in media or entertainment got started, like um, Viola Davis, you know, we didn't hear about her when she was 18 and, you know, 22, but her at 35 is like, look at all these accomplishments. Like, it's just, you, there's no timeline on when you have to accomplish things. There's no timeline on where you have to be. You know, I'm, I'm about to turn 27. When I was 18, I thought that 27 was going to be married, husband, three houses overseas, like these ideas that we have for ourselves in the future. There's no timeline on when you have to accomplish any of that. And I think that social media definitely makes us feel like we have to accomplish certain things by a certain level at times. So before we get started on to social media for business and how we can create some boundaries with our mental health when it comes to social media for business, guys, drop in the chat. How are you feeling about just some reflection on social media in your personal life? What types of boundaries do you feel like you need to set for yourself? How has social media affected your mental health on a personal note? I'm going to go back up through this chat and talk to our business owners. Headaches. Come on. Headaches. Which platform gives you the biggest headache? You know, I talked about Instagram a lot for me personally. Instagram is going to be gone off of my phone for the next couple of months. I honestly was just waiting for this weekend so I could talk to you guys because I think that social media is important. Twitter is really draining for me. Oh, I've spent months without Twitter because child, they be going in on Twitter. So starting your own business. Okay, so actually starting her own business and social media is important for business. TK works a lot with social media. Also, Hosanna, I want to say, um, you mentioned you don't feel drawn to share authentically anymore. I really um relate to that i really relate to that it seems like everything has to be curated it seems that everything has to be packaged up very perfectly um in order for it to be posted and sometimes i'm just like man i just miss the days when instagram was like y'all see these good tacos that i just ate you know we just posted about our food and posted real moments i miss that as well okay let's see Headaches, I feel you. Twitter is draining. Comparison, especially with successes. It's Facebook and Instagram for me. I'd rather just speak with people directly. It's better. I only use Instagram and Snapchat and never on Twitter. I use Facebook for business groups that I'm in. I love that. Not in hidden like lobby stuff because I'm not on the same level as the man that teaches the courses. Okay, so guys. Love what you shared about centering and in-person connections and exchanges. Yes. I just want to have a moment. This I know it's a heavy conversation. It is. And um, my goal for today was just storytelling. I feel like storytelling is important. It's powerful. And it could be uplifting. And I just wanted to tell you my story when it comes to social media and personal. So I know that you guys... The people in the chat have definitely been feeling the same way. I suggest take a break. I suggest take a break and I suggest um, reevaluating what are we using social media for? You know, um, that's such a, that's a really good question. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with the rest of my afternoon is really write and think and reflect on what am I using social media for? Um, I'm going to take a break from Instagram. That's my personal social media goal for my mental health. And I want to challenge you all to set a mental health social goal for you. 
um, what is it that you want to do to set a boundary and then reflect on the question, what are you using social media for? If you know your answers, drop them in the chat, but if you're taking notes, um, I think that would be an amazing question for you to reflect on um, for the rest of the weekend um, and throughout the next week. On a personal, I used to let what I saw on social media bother me. I say that because these are the people I know. So getting involved in the community, I see a lot of fraudulent activity and don't feel the need to post much of anything outside of business. Don't feel the need to prove anything because I'm actually doing the work I say I do. So I just do me and post what I post and get off. So I love that you said that. Feeling your authenticity through the sharing of your story we need more spaces for this i love that i'm so glad that you that um you know me sharing my story has been helpful and you know just felt good for you um mia sorry i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong but i love what you just said don't feel the need to prove anything because i'm actually doing the work i say i do i love this and um this is this is where i want to go next feel the need to prove anything. I just want to have a moment and um, speak some life into all of you because I think that that is the center of what a lot of people are using social media for is to prove something. And when we talk about social media and business, um, I used to say something like social media is like your digital business card. And that's like almost a resume when it comes to you as a business owner, whether it's products or services, um, social media is where people can see the proof of what you're actually doing. But I think that that's gone too far. In our personal lives, it seems like we really have to prove that we're having a happy life. Um, we have to prove that our relationship is relationship goals. We have to prove that we're a good parent, you know, because we're, we're reading a book with our child. We have to prove so many things. And the reality is you don't have to prove anyone to in, you don't have to prove anything to anyone except for yourself. Prove to yourself that you care about yourself by moving your body every day, by sitting in nature, by following up with your friends and checking in on them and FaceTiming your bestie that you haven't talked about in years randomly just because you care. Prove to yourself that you are worthy and that you are your top priority by setting your boundaries on social media and by taking action to nurture and cultivate your in-person real life relationships because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are capable, you are talented, you are valued, you are loved, you are goals, you are needed, you are unique, you are worthy, you are valuable and you don't have to prove anything to anyone. I want you guys to just sit with those affirmations because they're real. Another takeaway I would love to challenge you all to do would be to write a love letter to yourself. Write a love letter to yourself. Write a love letter to yourself, recognizing your joy, recognizing your skills, recognizing your talents, recognizing how capable, how worthy, talented, and loved you are. Tell yourself the, your favorite things about yourself. What do you love about you? For so, so many of us spend time on social media waiting for the validation and the like and the comment from others. I'm just following spirit here because this is necessary. This is necessary for me. And um, I hope it resonates with, with one of you guys. But I, we so often look for that validation from others. 
from our friends, from strangers, from people we don't even know. And we're forgetting to validate ourselves. We're forgetting to take a moment to double tap us, to comment on us. Validation from others does not take the place of actually validating ourselves. And it's important. It's important to validate yourself. I love that. Thank you, girl. Whew. Done got myself worked up here. So quickly, I want to touch on, um, if you guys have any questions, if you have any personal stories that you just want to share, let's just share. Here. hop in the chat let me know please get get anything out um this is a safe space for us to just talk about the safe space outside of social media because we can validate ourselves and cultivate our in-person friendships um to really meet our need of our sense of belonging what happens when you're so used to the outside world giving you all into validating others that you don't even know how to validate yourself. It happens. That happens. It's a reality. Um, sometimes we forget how to love on ourselves. Uh, a good example of this is, you know, if, if you're going through a breakup, you know, and the healing process that it takes to um, heal from a breakup, that example is similar because we have to remind ourselves that we're capable of loving ourselves. You know, it's not that we need that person, it's that we got comfortable and we wanted that person. Um, and the same thing with social media. It's not that we don't need social media. It's that we got comfortable with social media filling the holes and the gaps, you know, that we weren't giving ourselves. So you start at the basics. You start at the basics. You don't know how to val validate yourself, start at the basics. Remind yourself of who you were as a child. Remind yourself of what the child you, what the small you like to do. This is very random and very, very random. But yesterday I felt so overwhelmed with work. I'm at a coffee shop and I'm hungry. I didn't eat anything, just drinking all this coffee and just doing all this work. And I was getting my car to go home because I still had so much more to do. We had places to go, I had to get the baby, everything. And Shania Twain, uh, whose bed have your boots been under? So random. If you know this song, I'm just going to give you a gold star for the day. But that song came on the radio. And the last time I heard that song, I was, I don't even know. But I have such a vivid memory of being like 10 years old with my little sister and getting in my grandma's um, jewelry box and pulling out her dresses playing dress up and dancing um to this song in her living room and i just sat for a moment i relived that memory and it just put the biggest smile on my face and it was like i could feel child teal um dancing on the inside and that's just a moment of um, I didn't necessarily validate myself in that moment, but I just went back to the basics of what brought me joy. And I know that dancing and singing brings me joy. And I love doing those things. So when I have a moment where I forget what I love and I forget how to love on myself, I just tap into what childhood Teal enjoyed doing and what childhood Teal loved. So that's an example I would definitely say, but um, think about the younger you and what you like to do and um, why you are the way that you are. You know, our story really connects when we sit back and reflect and think about it. So think about your story. Um, and then the next thing I would say, if, if you know your love language, love the five love languages, it's a book. Um, there's a lot of, you know, writing on it, but it's this concept that we all have a universal um you know, five different love language types mainly. And we give and we receive love in that aspect. And the book is Love Languages for Couples. There's a version for singles. There's a version for parents. Um, and it really helps us understand each other when we're trying to give and receive love to each other. But it's also a beautiful tool to think about how to love on yourself. So my main love language is words of affirmation. 
I love when my friends or my partners and relationships are able to kind of sit down with me, look me in my eye and affirm something about me. Like Teal, you are so smart. The way you solved that problem was just so cool. I really love your mind and the way that it works. That is like, gives me feels and hard eyes and you know, makes me all warm and fuzzy, but I can, love on myself in that exact same way by just sitting in the mirror and having an Issa Rae moment and saying, Teal, you are it. You know, having a moment with myself in the mirror and using words of affirmations to love on myself. Um, that's a really beautiful way to start when it comes to affirming. Drop your love language in the chat if you know it. Akela said, mine is spending time with people and talking. So quality time, quality time. So to love on yourself with quality time could just be literally having time for you to sit and to think, to journal, um, a walk in nature. And it's just you, some solo time with just you loving on yourself um, and affirming yourself. That would be beautiful. Okay, TK, how do you reconcile wanting to stay up to date on the state of the world while also knowing that you that can be draining to your mental health. I have a lot of black youth and myself using social media to stay up to date with the world's injustices. Yeah, I love that question um, because we, we wanna be informed, we wanna be in the know, we wanna also be able to um, participate and contribute to the movement, you know, just as a whole, the movement of our community as a whole. So how do you reconcile with that? What I would say here is just, is is boundaries, um, boundaries, time limits, and giving yourself. So, you know, what I would suggest is making sure that you have some type of morning, evening routine where you fill yourself back up. Because at the end of the day, what, um, you know, social media and news or, you know, Twitter feeds, it, it almost becomes draining when we're trying to tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in, um, react, react. It's it, social media is an energy. It's an energy exchange. So being able to dedicate time where you fill yourself back up is the key. That's what's important. So setting um, a boundary for yourself. I don't get on my phone before 10 a.m. or at, after 8 p.m. I'm not on the phone or, you know, I'm not on the app at the least and iPhones, you know, um, iPhones have our time limit features that you can find in the settings area to really give yourself a time limit on any specific apps, um, which is which is great. Leaving the phone outside of the bedroom, putting it in the bathroom if you can, or plugging it up on the other side of the wall. Um, those are a lot of different things that I would suggest when it comes to setting boundaries with your time on screen. It's, it really comes down to having um, prioritized ways for you to fill yourself back up and for you to give yourself peace in your day because you don't get peace from, you know, scrolling all day, but you do get peace. For me personally, I get peace by yoga, doing yoga. So, um, you know, I, I try to prioritize getting up and stretching, moving my body first before I grab my phone. I try to prioritize, um, I have my phone, go, it goes on do not disturb at 9.15 and I don't get text calls, notifications from the apps, anything. And I just try to use that as time where I wind down from the day and fill my energy back up and relax so that I have good sleep. Rest is important. Rest is, rest is important. It's very important. And um, it, it just helps us maintain our peace. It helps us maintain our health and fills us back up. I don't, I don't even watch the news. I let the news come to me. It starts to be in the know, but I, it's smart to be in the know, but I can't help not wanting to be bothered. And you know your limits, you know yourself. You know yourself, I think from TK's perspective, you know, it is part of the job to be in the know and to be connected. So that comes with some pressure. 
But the most important thing, like I said, is is knowing how to refill yourself and knowing what boundaries you need to set and what to prioritize and when. I think that's really important. What else, guys? I'm, I'm, I'm loving this um, conversation. This was just so timely to, to be talking about because the reality is social media can be very draining. But, you know, just to recap on some of the things that we talked about, boundaries, um, across social media but also just across our lives and prioritizing um, our in-person connections our energy fillers whatever fills us up whatever brings us joy and peace and then um, reflecting on our story reflecting on our story really understanding why are we on social media what is the goal um, and then taking action so taking action would look like deleting certain apps, unfollowing certain people, muting certain people, um, taking action and really understanding what action you need to take. All right, guys, I feel like we have about 15 more minutes. I love to um, answer any questions and just, you know, deep dive into any areas that you guys feel like would be helpful. What do you do to de-stress? I find it so hard to stick with something or remember to do so. I find it hard as well. And I'm a Gemini, so just naturally by nature, I switch up my routines all the time. But do you see my yoga mat over here? I do yoga to de-stress. Um, I found yoga as my sole source of peace while I was pregnant and the heart of this pandemic and every time I did yoga, I just felt my body from head to toe just coming into such a relaxation state. So that's why I really wanted to start us off with that breath, breathing exercise, to just kind of give us a second to tune in to ourself and tune in to our body. Um, because it's our body speaks to us in so many ways. Um, and when we really listen and feel um, we can prevent a lot of things, you know. Um, so de-stress. I, I do yoga. Um, I also like am a fan of aromatherapy. So I have essential oils. Some of my favorite essential oils are lavender, um, rosemary, and peppermint. And I love to drop my essential oils in my shower right before I get into my shower. I put my, I drop my oils in there um, and just let the aroma fill up with the steam. And it's so relaxing, it just helps me calm my nerves. Um, I also, I also spend time in nature to distress, de-stress and sit near water. Water really, really calms me down um, like a lake, like a river. I think Ashley said she was in Tampa and I'm like, very by the ocean. She said she was jealous of Atlanta. The only thing Atlanta needs is like a very large body, like ocean. There's some lakes out here. I know y'all about to tell me about the lakes, but I need an ocean. I need an ocean view sometimes to really just calm down. And I journal. A journaling is a major de-stressor for me, just getting my thoughts and my emotions out on paper. Because sometimes our brain just moves so fast. And when we put our hands on paper and pen, we're able to slow our thoughts down. We're able to slow our emotions down and really take a moment to process it. Um, which is why I really believe in the power of paper and pen. So, so powerful. She's, that's the only thing I ever miss when I'm not in Florida. Seriously, the ocean. What do you guys do to de-stress? Let's all share tips and see if, you know, anyone takes anything new into their um, routines or weekly, you know, weekly practices. Drop in the chat, what do you do to de-stress, guys? Coloring books, such a good one. Coloring books is such a good one. Very, very fun. I love arts and crafts. I have canvases and acrylic paints and paint brushes just like sitting up in the closet and I pull them out like every so often to just paint a picture. Um, and I think the coloring book activity is so good because, you know, it's mindfulness. We have to focus on 
you know, fit, coloring the lines and everything, but it also brings us back to childhood. Like I mentioned before, really tuning in and tapping into that, that inner child version of yourself, because that's when we found joy at the most purest moment, you know, and that sits with us. And some of us have to grow up too fast and we don't get to really enjoy that pure joy, that unfiltered happiness that we had when we were children. Yoga, tennis, nature walks, love, love, love. But Andrea, tennis, I need to take some tennis lessons because <laughs> that would be really fun. I'm driving now, just jump on the interstate with a good playlist and think things through. Yes, that that is so good. And sometimes I have the same song on repeat for an hour long drive just because that one song is giving me so much joy. That's such a good one. Going on drives is coming to me. Music must be blasting. Yep, blasting. Singing at the top of my lungs. I'll be giving people a full concert and full performances at the red lights. No care in the world. I like to go on long drives and blast them. Everyone loves drives and blasting their music. <laughs> my other favorite is to go on long walks on nature trails. Being in nature is so important. It's so important. We are, I mean, just our like our community as black people as at, like being in nature is just part of reconnecting yourself with earth and life it's so important i love that you said that okay so true black girls don't get to be children as long as everyone else so true valerie 20 minute nap okay come on nap because nap life is real my daughter goes goes down for two naps a day and I've started to join her. <laughs> Asha said, yes, I love this. I love this, guys. Well, this was beautiful. Um, I think there's about 10 minutes left, but all I really wanted to do is just share my story um, and encourage you to do the same and to think about your story, to think about why we're on social media, um, remind us about our boundaries and prioritizing um, our peace, and then inspiring you to take some type of action, whether that's a social media hiatus, delete the app, set on your um, time limits, you know, for your app on your settings on your phone so that you can use technology to empower you to make better choices. I used to do yoga and cooking, but I stopped, started dancing. Ooh, pottery and clay and journaling I forgot to do all these things for music as a constant i moved out of the city and there are literally trees and deer everywhere best thing ever love that um pottery sounds very fun but like i need to try that soon in dancing of course in music music always brings us joy i love this guys i loved hearing your um your personal stories and your challenges but also i love that we just ended on um joy and de-stressing because that is you know the root of how we protect our mental health is we go back to the things that bring us joy we refill ourselves we refill our cup and we find new ways to manage our stress and the thing is one routine might work for you in the summertime and you might need a different routine in the winter time but it's really all about tuning into yourself tuning into your body and listening to what you need and then acting accordingly. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you found it inspiring and encouraging. I know that I did. And thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. We are the culture. Okay, guys, there's another session right after this. We are the culture, Black girls in media representation. There's the link to join right up there in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I enjoyed this too, and I really needed it also. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to y'all also. I need ocean and water too. And while in Atlanta, I have found a lot of nurturing water. Yes, Chattahoochee River is my favorite. There's the um, Chattahoochee Coffee Company, and it's a coffee shop that literally sits right on the water. It's so special to me. Yes. I love it. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. That is all that I have for you today. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you to our hostess. I hope you guys are really enjoying the Black Girls Are Magic conference. I know it's such a beautiful thing that they put all of this together. Thanks, you. You're so welcome. All right. Bye, y'all.